All right, we're back. Semifinals round. We've got two rounds left on the day. Four players vying for first place. Will Kruger is here with me for the next for the rest of the day, however long it takes. Uh, we're going to look at the bracket as it currently stands, as we just saw a moment ago as we went. We've got four players remaining. Drew Christensen, Josh Feliciano, Sean Ryder, and Jamie Robertson are the remaining players. The other 81 are gone. So we're going to be watching the matchup on the left. So first, let's briefly talk about the matchup on the right. Sean Ryder, Tron, Jamie Robertson, Humans. Humans gets to go first. Yep. I like the Tron side. I well, also like the Tron side, but with Humans on the play, they've got a decent shot. Sure. Um, the, like, the biggest crux to me is, like, when you're on the play, um, if you have a meddling mage and mm -hmm. they lead on Star, naming Sylvan Scrying can be, like, crippling. Yeah. You can actually keep them off Tron. If they lead on map, you just name Oblivion Stone, and then you and then you pray they don't do anything else. Yeah, but they usually do something else. Shocker. Yeah, uh, no, it is. Uh, Humans has a chance, but yeah, I, I would be on the Tron side of things. On the other I, side I, of the bracket, Burn versus Blue Eye Control with Burn going first. This time we're gonna look at the deck list before we make our picks. This is the match we're featuring. So Drew Christensen playing Burn. Okay, Josh Feliciano, Blue Eye Control. We're looking here first. You mentioned during the break the card you're looking for is Timely Reinforcements. How yes. many and where are they? We've got Looks one like we've got main, one. one board, yeah, which yeah. Is, that's that's good. Usually, I mean, having one main deck means that he's going to have having one main deck, and then he's going to have uh, probably two post board games with two in his with his, in his deck is is more than average, I think. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't know. It, it, deck lists are just so in flux; it's hard to say. But the fact that he's got one, and he has that fifth one mana removal spell for the mm -hmm. for the one mana creatures and Eidolon of the Great Rebel with the Oust yeah. is a huge deal. These Nard sets kind of suck; they'll probably be boarded out. Um, but his deck overall is like. It's pretty lean, you know, for a blue eye control deck at least. Like we have, it, we it, have. Uh, it's not that bad. There's not too many expensive cards. There's one yeah. Shark Typhoon. There's one Teferi Hero of Dominaria. One Jason Mind Sculptor. Yeah, those, those will probably be coming out, but yeah, yeah. this is not a, a high curved blue eye control deck, and yeah. there are no like or very few expensive sorcery speed spells. So that will help. Now let's take a look at the burn side of things. This is the burn deck with skull cracks in the main deck, so that's probably a point in Drew Christensen's yes, favor. For sure, skull crack also, is going to be huge. Also, only three searing blades. The other burn deck we saw today had four mains, so that's another minor having, point in Drew's favor. Less against the like two creature yeah. deck is going to be solid, right? Uh, there, the rest of the deck is pretty accepted. It's just this is the way these things are built. Then out of the board, we've got uh, a relatively new card in Rolling Vortex which is a slow yeah. buildup of damage and prevents life gain, which, I mean... I, I expect Vortex will be coming in, right? I mean, it, basically the way they win is usually by gaining life. Shocking. I mean, you know, got that hard-hitting analysis of gaining life good against burn. But, uh, you know, that's like their main route to victory. And also, if you play it on turn two, you're probably going to play like six or seven more turns. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, like they have to ferry three to bounce it. Uh, I think in like cryptic get bounced and under turn or like ether gust or whatever. Like it's not, it's not like the, it's not going to be lights out at all. But it's going to be, it's going to be a huge pain. I mean, you don't want to mm -hmm. be taking one a turn. I mean, like right. at all. All right, so so yeah. we're going down to game one. So which side do you want? Well, oh wow, this look at the timely hand. open hand. Is that uh, okay? Well, worry about. I, oh, I would keep this. Yeah, I, I mean the I opt. Love, I love I love this keep. We got the opt. We have a force, and we have a path for an early creature, and we have our one main deck timing reinforcements, which is just our, our our best card in the matchup far and away. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like this keep a lot. It obviously like sometimes it doesn't pan out, and you miss your second land drop for like five turns, and you look stupid. But I think this is a good keep. I think this is okay. We drew a field of ruin, so mm -hmm. I think That'll we're playing, this, and we can probably opt into a third land or draw yeah. it in the next like. We have to look at a lot of cards here. Like one, two, three. We have to see four cards before we need to hit with a land drop. So that's pretty good. And the question is, what are we doing with this Swiss right. here? Like, are we pathing or opting? I'd be into path it. Okay. Not going to path it. That's fine. I mean, maybe Josh doesn't want to have to shock, but I think he's probably going to be forced into it. Yeah, he's got, I, I he needs they're... both colors. Yeah. No, notably, I would have gotten a hollow fountain on my main phase uh, to play around Skewer the Critics. Um, so sure. we couldn't cast that if you wanted to. That's how I would have played this turn exactly, is I would have fetched and shocked and just passed. And then I'd probably pass it. Uh, because I hate having these things deal any more damage to me than they have to. Um, you could just get a Hollow Fountain here. Or we're gonna get yeah, or... Okay, this is actually fine. I actually yeah. like this line. This is actually better. Yeah, this is a good This is a good call. 
Because uh, the Swiss Spear is only attacking for one, yeah, it's not as important to hit path. Now, that's not a good draw. And now we're kind of priced into opting here. So we're going to take a pile opt, from this really? Swift Spear. I, thought, I kind of thought we were going to path this now. I don't I don't think you can opt. I mean, Swift Spear's worth at least three points with the Rift Bolts, right? Yeah. And, like, probably four or five, which is, like, that's probably that's not acceptable. Because we're going to 11 minimum, like... Got, I think you gotta fire off the path sure. here. You could, I guess you could fire off a force here. You probably do. That's probably what this Narset's gonna do, is just get pitched with this force. Um, but yeah, you don't have to play the Timely on turn three, right? No, like, you don't have to, but I want to cast it before we're dead. And I, I also want to do the, that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If we, if we path and then have to opt into the land, and so have basically no turn next turn, I, 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 it depends a lot on whether another creature comes down for Drew. That, that's going to be the, the big deal. Okay. But he's going to have to make the decision is... before he knows. Whoa. Oh. Is that what you expected to happen? Because it's not what I thought would happen. I expected the Narset. Right. Um, but the last time I expected Josh to do something, I ended up liking his play better, which is getting the irrigated farmland. So I, I'm definitely down to think about it more. Um, I think I still would have pitched the Narset, right? Like, uh, maybe not. Cause you do need to get ahead. I mean, but... we're if even if we if we draw the land, we're certainly playing timely first okay i definitely did not want to do it in attacks i want to do it in blocks um in case that we can get drew to fire something off because then he doesn't have skull correct mana looks like he's gonna fire something off anyway i don't really understand that um at all sure. yeah it's weird right because like now like why are we do oh, i guess we're just doing it now so it doesn't get countered okay so now drew's playing around mana leaks and stuff which is fine you do want to fire off okay. your stuff when they can't get countered so that, that makes sense it's now, now i'm I'm much less excited about the timely now because I mean we're not getting a creature. We're we two draw the land. Are you we do get to this? twelve here against one card though. Uh, Although we do have a Sunbeck Canyon. So yeah, I actually like Drew firing off the burn spells there. Playing around counter spells is usually what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, in those spots, he just Josh has the one timely, and so he's getting a little punished, uh, which sucks. But I, that was a good play, and like on average, like usually uh -huh. not letting. Josh spent his mana this turn on a mana leak or an Archmage's Charm or whatever. I guess Charm isn't an option because of Field of Ruin or whatever. A counter spell, not letting him use this mana is going to be critical. So I actually did like that play, but... Uh, Drew needs a creature right now, and even yeah, then it's still going to get pathed. Yeah, and well, the Snar set, I would much rather have the Snar set than the Cryptic right now, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, we're seeing a Drew fire off the Burn Spell's main phase again, which I think is solid. All right, mm -hmm. we get a five and just set the terms of engagement for the game. Fair enough. We don't have any counter spells. Uh, Shark Typhoon is not great. I assume we're just playing Narset and we're just going to look for a counter spell. We're going to opt for a land. Uh, wow. could do that. I would, I think I'd play Narset. We can't I die to land. anything. We cannot die. I would play Narset. Yeah. And then if you get a force, that's great. Okay. That man likes, mm, okay. Okay. Well, this worked out like perfectly because now yeah. we're only one land from Snap Timely and Snap Timely. Yeah. Like obviously we're okay guys, but who cares? We, <laughs> we're going to be at a million life and it's going to be awesome because we're going to be at a million life. Okay, now we're taking Cryptic, I assume. I can't imagine taking Opt here. Right. Um, I think this game should be pretty much rolled up. I really like how Josh played this. I, I it, it worked out. It was beautiful the way it turned out, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he like I don't think I would have opted there. I would. Oh, do not crack. Ooh. That's not good. Yeah, that's too bad. But... If you're gonna if you're gonna you know bobble that like that, you may as well do it in the game you're already losing. So yeah, you make sure game, you don't do it next game. Yeah, this, this game was uh, was kind of a lost cause. Um, anyway, um, yeah, and you know what Josh said in chat there is true. It, it happens to the best of us. Like everybody, everybody like not maybe not literal Narset, but everybody just misses something. They play the wrong land, you know. Yeah. They, and these players have been playing all day at this point. Yeah, I mean, like, this event started at 11 a.m. Central, and it's now 6 p.m. Central. It's seven hours into Magic, and, like, it happens. Magic is really hard, and sometimes yeah. you miss something. And 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 even, like, I mean, even players that are regular tournament players are a year out of practice of playing in long events. Yeah, yeah. So now we're just going to trade the Shark Typhoon with the... This game is uh, it's pretty much done for... Um, can't imagine Drew will concede like this turn. Maybe okay. Now we're gonna snap the timely because the irrigated farmland is a plane, so the castle lard will enter untapped, and we're gonna be at eleven, and we're gonna have a two-one, and we're gonna have five cards in hand or whatever to uh, Drew's none. So that sounds favorable. I, On the I, other I, hand, I, Drew I could draw an ether vial, in which case the tides oh, might turn. True, true. Ether vial could could be good. <laughs> I mean, we saw how good it was for the humans player. I mean, that game was literally unwinnable without that ether vial on turn five. <laughs> Like literally, like nothing, nothing could have possibly happened with the Ethereal. All right. So 
<clears throat> so lucky to draw the Ethermile. You could honestly just leave this 2-2 in play. It, I thought about that, too. You could even... You probably aren't supposed to do that, but, like... Eh. Yeah, you, I mean, you might as well. So, yeah, that uh, timely reinforcements... <clears throat> Josh is in life total is negative without having drawn had that, although but he was able to plan around it. Just maneuvered the lands so they would line up. And Okay. Yeah, I mean this game fine. is uh, okay. yeah. I guess we're not time laying, but it, <laughs> it doesn't you know. really matter as long as oh yeah, this, sure, burn off the spell snare, no problem. Whatever, spell snare this. Be able to ruin something, and we can snap timely this turn. I guess I don't, I, I don't know, man. There's just yeah, not would, much to say about this one. You don't even need to snap timely, honestly. You don't. Or, uh, I, mean, I think we could just counter our way to victory at this point and tackle Snapcaster made seven times. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you can possibly lose if you go to eleven here. Um, no, I don't um, think so either. And if we do that, then uh, you know, then Drew will probably concede. And then we don't have to this game anymore, but you know, that's fine. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's probably better to play here down an area. It's very good to drop here. Yeah. Pass with the uh, logic not up. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just do whatever you want. Like, I, I think that he could just F6 through this turn and Drew's turn yeah. and, still, and still be. Impossible to lose. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This one is over with. Drew, take a moment, figure out how he wants to sideboard, and come back with a vengeance for the sideboard games. Yeah, I mean, uh, I do think Drew's a little ahead overall. Losing game one is obviously he's not favored to win the match anymore. Um, but I do think that he's probably going to be uh, in good shape for each individual game. Especially because Josh doesn't have that much on the board. It's like two gusts, a purge, and like a timely, which is mm -hmm. you know a lot. But purge isn't like like a dragon's claw level of sideboard card, right? It's like right. it's like a okay, it's like a it's like a piece of interaction that you 100 percent okay. So we do this, and yeah, I mean literally, literally whatever you want to do here works. Uh, I would have snapped timely at some point here just to. But yeah, this is well, fine. you can do it at the end of turn now. Oh yeah, now we just do it end of turn. <laughs> We can't get skull cracked, so that's great. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, and we can. Yeah. This game has been over for I don't know five Four turns or something. Five yeah, turns. Something like that. yeah. Basically, when that third land came up, that was kind of the end of it. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean... Whatever. This is the part where you cast Supreme Verdict to flex. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> man, we really do not want to actually end this game, do we? Do we? I mean, why not? We're winning. We're taking game actions while ahead. That's yeah, a, I mean... That's a I, pleasurable feeling. Yeah, I... I guess, yeah. That's fine. We can sit here, I guess. We should probably concede. Okay, this is fine, I guess. Sure. I mean, someone was bound to win a game that we declared over eventually. So we've been yeah. wrong a couple times today. True, true. We're just going to get the slow Castle Arden Veil burnout, you know? We're going to exile all his permanents, kill him with some dorky 1-1. One -one. We didn't even need to snap timely. Did you want to snap timely? Because I didn't yeah, want to snap. I, never was... wanted to. I didn't want to do that ever. <laughs> that, was, that was fine. I told you we didn't need it. Not, not, not five turns ago, no. <laughs> now. Now, it, oh, first... He probably only has three mountains, too. So he's probably going to run out of base. Of the... Oh, are you kidding me? This land is not even going to... Oh, yep, geez. just... Uh, oh, now we get to Ghost Court of Sacred Foundry, you know? Because this game... Good thing we did that. Because probably couldn't win this game without without those cards. That's good. Hey, I mean, if your opponent doesn't concede, you're allowed yeah, to do no, whatever I mean, you want. Yeah, no, I mean, do whatever you want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Le play around it. Yeah. Yeah. The, no, no, worries. no worries. No worries. Attack? No, no worries. You know, we're playing on a goblin guide. How can we possibly get a goblin guide if we don't yeah, attack? Well, maybe with one Josh is under the impression that the prize increases the longer that you're on camera. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that could be it. Uh... 
Magic. Drew came to play Magic, and Josh did too. They're both getting oh no. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now we counter target spell, draw a card. Uh, notably, doing this over Lodge not so we cannot ca- activate Asl- Castle Ardenvale because if we could activate Castle Ardenvale, the clock might increase. Dude, which, we should have really bounced, bad. draw a card. We should have bounced the Narset. Oh yeah, that that would have been way better than drawing a card, but uh, that's fine. All right, draw two cards. Draw another card for my draw step. Can we, yet? can we Alstar token to gain life? Uh, yes, yes we can. So we can uh, snap timely, go to eight or go to eleven, and then we can Alstar guy, and go to fourteen, and then we can have all of these planeswalkers and fourteen life against no cards. Dude, you could out, you could snap out the snap and gain three more. Oh well, yeah, that's all. That's at least ultimate. Oh my god, we we really are just not about ending this game, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, maybe, I hope maybe, we hold back again and just maybe really. Maybe Josh will screw up and deck himself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen. Oh. Okay. So now, now it's safe. It's safe. It's safe now to get in with the one one. You know, before it was not safe. We were actually in danger, but now it's safe. Oh, and it's free to cast this opt because we untap a land to fairy. So that's cool. All right. So now we're gonna discard the island and the fairy. I guess. Because we have nine cards in our hands. <laughs> Woo! Or verdict. Yeah, verdict sounds. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> okay. End of turn. Okay, no, no, it's oh. cool. Because we got this inspiring advantage, which will get us right back into the game. Right back into it. All right, the clock doubles. Yeah, and you know, okay, now, okay, okay. We just opt. Sure. <laughs> I mean, okay, now, now we're done. Yeah, now we're done. All right. Josh Feliciano decisively eventually wins game wins game one. And yeah, he ended up lopsided. It really didn't start out all that close either. And uh, Josh takes it down. So let's take a look. It's been a while. Let's take a look at those sides, see what we've got, see if uh, Drew can conjure up something to, to get himself out of this deficit. The Vortex we talked about. The, yeah, the Skullcrack we talked about. Yep, I would basically expect just those two card or those three cards, and then mm-hmm. we're probably just going to clean swap them for the Searing Blazes and run yep. it back. Sounds uh, good to me. All right. Yeah. Let's look at blue-white side, and we've got second Timely Reinforcements, Celestial Purge, and yep. two weeks ago, so those are the four you said earlier. I don't. Maybe you want spell crawlers. I, 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 I think crawler is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. because there's no way that Drew ever leaves in his steering places, even though he knows you have the crawlers. Like that's just yeah. not happening. Um, and like you want to put a clock on them on the average game. Like obviously that yeah. game we didn't want to put a clock on them because we just wanted to kind of sit there and and enjoy it. You know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's also super cool at Teferi if it ever comes up. So yeah, I think like we could pull the Narsets probably. Yep, we Narset. can. Pull the Shark Typhoon or the t- or the Teferi Hero. I think one of those two is probably fine. I, I think get, get them both out of there. The and then, the do you want Supreme Verdict? Out. Um, I would probably have like one, maybe two verdicts. Like verdict okay. is actually okay in a number of spots. Yeah. Um, but uh, usually, if the creature you usually die in the games where the creatures go unchecked, but like sometimes yeah. they, you are able to counter their spells to survive, and then you can wrath the creatures. To, sort of stabilized so you know yep. it comes up more than i mean shark typhoon is like really bad right like i think so yeah it's only really relevant late and like way late uh i guess you do want to clock way late so that's fine but i, I think the narsets for sure should come out chase mm-hmm. is pretty bad um yeah we want the cards that say target that they like they explicitly say target a red thing like ether mm-hmm. and purge those are obviously good yeah. against the all red card stack and yeah. then timely so Life. I don't mind the Mind Sculptor. I think Fate Sealing matters. I think bouncing yeah, Eidolon off the board without taking damage can matter. Yeah. But yeah, I can totally see pulling it out. There's probably worse stuff. Like the Narsets, the Shark, and Tif- yeah, it's Fairy 5. That's four cards already. All right. Well, this the Jace is still there. Um, a Path and a Force and two land. I think we're good. Yeah, this hand uh, looks quite good. Uh, we left in the Jace, which actually seems totally reasonable. Uh, and I keep like wanting to do things differently, and then like Josh does something that works out way better, and like it makes a lot of sense. So I, you know, I would definitely believe that Jace is good. Um, man, this Colonnade is just man. I wish it was just 
not colonnade. Well, so maybe it won't be. That one got, yep, there you go. Oh, That's okay. a basic. Now we get to bunch of planes. Nice I and guess easy. we're actually. Okay, let's invert it too. Yeah. And Drew did, did take a mulligan, which is unfortunate. So you're going to path main phase here, or you have to discard? Discarding is the choice. Um, verdict? Probably. Boy, I was really surprised when you mouse over the cryptic command there. I was like, we already did this once today and we're wrong. And Keeping the verdict would be kind of... I'm really surprised you didn't touch a planes and path there. Huh. Okay, well, this is the draw, right? It's just being on the play yeah. uh, with Goblin Guide and Eidolon. We even have the perfect land, so we even have just advantage, vantage. So we took no damage, and we got... I mean, not that damage really matters here. Another path, okay. So we get to take two... We take three total, we go to 13, and we kill both the creatures. Yeah, I think that sounds like a reasonable plan. You may as well wait for the attack. I don't think there's any risk to that. Now, both of these players uh, notably have format championship avatars that you get for uh, qualifying for mock showcase events on Magic Online, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know that's what that represented. Yeah, the uh, Winota one is Pioneer, and uh, the Karn one is the modern one. Hmm. All right, so here we go, an attack in. At least... Ah. Is that an opt? Okay, well, it doesn't do a whole lot, but I guess Josh will take it. I, mean, I think we're shuffling it to Path the Goblin Guide, right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a fine spot. We've got a, got a cheap counter spell. Yeah, this is probably fine for uh, for Josh. If he has second, if you're a second Eidolon, we have some problems, right? But uh, beyond that, we should be okay. Yeah, we look fine. I mean, we have the... We have the Snapcaster, too. Yeah, we seem... Definitely forcing this. I yeah. actually think you want the Jace. Yeah, you might pitch a Cryptic this time. But yeah, I uh, guess that. not, though. That's fine. Um, I don't know. Jace gives you, like, actual closing speed. Like, you actually get to get ahead. And you do need to get ahead. Like, you can't just sit here against Burn for... I don't even know that we need to force, really. I, I think I like... I mean, what, what else are you going to force? Like, I guess you get to hard cast it. But, I mean, four... Getting to four is... Uh, <laughs> Roiling Vortex to come down and bust us up here over the next dozen That's turns. True. That's true. Maybe you want to save it for Roiling Vortex. Uh, um, well, you were talking about both players having format champion or yeah, format champions. Drew's got all kinds of achievements. Apparently, he was a a Paralympian in 2008 in the Olympics, and wow. also was a <laughs> runner really cool. to a Grand Prix in 2019. So, oh, that's achievements awesome. in multiple different fields. Good for. Yeah. Good that's for you, Drew. Cool. That's awesome. However, unfortunately for you, I don't think you're going to win this match. Uh, it's not looking great. Uh, it's not looking great at all here. Uh, Drew, Drew drew a lot of lands. I uh, told I he, you he's going to draw the opt. Get out of here. <laughs> fair, fair. He actually it might be the same one. Twice. It could be the same one. Probably yeah. isn't. But, you know, uh, could be, I guess. Yeah, this game is going to be I mean, tough. Yeah. I mean, Josh's hand is just so good. Um Imagine if red, we just slammed a Jason plus here. Red needs, all. like, if you can have Veil of Summer in Modern, Red should be able to have, like, Pyroblast that also cantrips or something. <laughs> I, I would definitely counter draw this, by the way. Uh, yeah. I, I want to fire off my Cryptic uh, early and often in these matchups. It's just so yeah. clunky, and, like, a good burn player is just going to play on your end step, and, like, you're just mm -hmm. wasting mana. It's, just, it's not going to get much more than three damage anyway, just fire it off. Like, yeah. The exchange. Yeah, and that's why uh, maybe maybe like the Jace better than that here because the Jace is also going to absorb three damage by getting bolted. Uh, and you could just plus the Jace, right? Like yeah, or you could plus it uh, either way. If you yeah. <clears throat> need something right away, you could brainstorm. Otherwise, you could you would plus, and then it's just probably just going to sit there. You, yeah, like that last plus, one, we had an empty board and drew a yeah. two cards. So we could just sign the Jace and plus on ourselves. We couldn't plus on Drew because he had a fetch in play. Yeah, but uh, plus on yourself and like he, fire, he either fires off two bolts, which is uh, an absolute win. Or he doesn't, and he gets buried. Okay, Goblin Guide. Um, this could be dealt with in several different ways. <clears throat> Maybe even opt, snap opt, and then trade the snap for the Goblin Guide. 
Yeah, I think that's a good play. Like, obviously, uh, like last game, I was talking about how I, I wish Josh would just start actually killing his opponent. Uh, but this is good because you, you actually just want to get further ahead here in the 2 1. Like, you don't actually need the clock yet because you're not comically far ahead yet, right? Right. So I think, I think yeah. it would be good to opt, snap, opt. Um, although, I suppose if we do that uh, and our Snapcaster gets burned out, then we no longer um, have the ability to deal with the Scoblin Guide until next turn when we have a colonnade to block it, right? Yeah. We'll probably find timely reinforcements right here anyway. Yeah, I'd probably just win anyway. Um, timely? We're definitely not keep, keeping this planes. There's another opt. I think I would opt now just for the information, and then I would figure out what I wanted to do with the Snapcaster. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I would cast the other opt first. There's no reason not to, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, there's no manatee or anything. Yeah. Um, Okay, I guess we're going for the Snapcaster range. I, I think I'm pretty sure that you want to opt first just to get the slight like more information and then you figure out, but that's not a huge deal. I mean, maybe Josh is thinking, well, I might not need to actually break this fetch line at any point and just stay at 10. That's true. Yeah, nine is relevant. And you know, like I actually do like firing off this path here because if, if the Snapcaster gets burned, like, you know, I can see us losing to a two two or get a two two getting in a lot of points and then Drew just mm -hmm. kind of drawing a bunch of Boros charms, that would be very bad. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Path to Exile on the flashback. Get that third mountain out of the deck. So now, now the Eagles Quarter and Field of Ruin are live. Yeah. Uh, I don't of. think those are super relevant anyway, but uh, yeah, I think that Drew had a, did have a really nice run here with Burn. I, I think he actually recently did well in a modern challenge on Magic Online, maybe yesterday or last week. I think it was yesterday, actually, because that was the first challenge with Moto or with uh, the bands. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think he top eight two events with this burn deck this weekend, which is really impressive. Yeah. Um, and the modern challenge on Magic Online is, is also really big. It's like 100 yeah. plus people most yeah, times. Not easy. Okay, so the Flood's Trend does not break. Yeah, it's maybe it's just going to stick around. Yeah, uh, it's fine to not go to nine here. That's actually tight. Uh, and there's yeah. a totally reasonable reason to not cast the op like we were suggesting. So yeah, I think if fun. you were going to fetch, especially with the... Um, the cycle land that uh, comes to my tap there, if you were going to fetch, you would have done it for that. You would have done it right there. So I think it's just not going to happen if you can avoid yeah, it. I agree. I think that's a heads up play. Definitely bottoming this. Spell scenario. Okay. Well, this game, this game isn't over, over. Uh, we weren't able to find a planeswalker or a way to really get ahead. I mean, we have this two, one, which I, I do want to attack with here. Uh, obviously if you draw the haste creature, you look foolish, but I really want to start ending the game. And, you know, like, we have these colonnades, so, like, okay, guess we're not, all right, I'm <laughs> once again, uh, run. But, um, I don't know, maybe it's okay. And, like, maybe your route to victory is ultimately just going to be a planeswalker, and yeah. so... Drew, with two cards in hand, I mean, you're right, there is no, like, actual advantage right now for Josh. And several of the planeswalkers did probably get boarded out. The Jace is gone. Did we use the Jace? Um, I mean, so, the, the way we're winning is almost certainly going to be damage. We probably have smoke colors in our deck, and we have these colonnades that are yeah. going to start firing yeah. up pretty soon, right? Like, probably this turn and just leaving the spell center up. Because Drew is clearly not interested in playing into Mana Leak. Although, it's now going to get harder because we get to yeah. kill two of his lands. So that's kind of a nice little squeeze there, right? It's like we have the Mana Leak, and also we run out of basics, so our we turn our Mana Leak on, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, That's, now it's now now we can attack. Yeah, because we can just cryptic a, a goblin guide or whatever. And he clearly doesn't have any. He's not holding goblin guides in hand. I don't think. Right? Looks like he's mousing over the snapcaster and is probably planning on getting in there. Yeah, because now we have yeah counter bounce snapcaster mage with mana league backup. Yeah, without even having uh, to fetch. Yeah, we we have a. A lot of good stuff going on here. I yeah. kind of thought that we were going to ghost quarter uh, something, so our mana leak is likely to be good, but maybe we want that mana for uh, colonnade activations, so it's probably okay. Yeah, I'm down to just uh, fire off the scripted command like uh, like we were on the lava spike earlier. I kind mm -hmm. of expect Drew to act 
actually, this is quite good because the reason the Druid's doing his main phase is almost certainly to enable a Skill Critics, which he might hard cast here. Okay, he's not going to do that and walk into a Mana Leak. So that's heads up. He might have to run into a Mana Leak with it anyway at some point, but I do like that he's showing a uh, extreme reluctance to not get his spells Mana Leak. Mm -hmm. Still, I would have liked... I, I think the Snapcaster Mage is worth more than tar card off the top of the deck. So I would have been interested in the balance there. Yeah. Uh, if you pulse the Snapcaster Mage, it's also kind of a win for you, right? Why is that? Well, you, you, you want that. Like, oh, you're saying that wouldn't... Yeah, 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 I think that's like fine. That, yes, I, I agree think that, I think that's a good exchange for you. Yeah, yeah me too. It, yeah, I mean, he has Searing Blaze post-board and had... I don't remember if he had... He actually did have Landfall from the Sunbait Canyon. So if he had Searing Blaze post board somehow, then that's really bad for you. But yeah, I, that's true. I think it's super. I, there's looking at Drew's deck. There's I think it's I'm almost 100 percent confident that he swapped his three Searing Blazes for two Rolling Vortexes and a Skull Crack. Like yeah, his, almost every other card in his sideboard is blank. Yeah, like and his his sideboard looked pretty face up. Uh, although uh, that Josh probably is able to figure that out also. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now we have a now we have a hard counter for anything. Um, okay, so it's now. Is now the time? Looks like it. Okay. I mean... So this is in for six. So it's still it, not... Now, oh. now I thought we were going to sit on leak plus force. Because we just have so much stuff. Yeah, I think I like holding back here. Yeah. And it's not... I mean, it's not a two-turn two win. And if right, it was, exactly. I'd be more interested. Yeah, even if we hit here, it's not a two-turn win next turn anyway. Right? Because we only put him to 13. Yeah. Like having only spell snare up. I mean spell snare is uh is good. Like okay, so we are gonna get in, I guess. Right? Okay. Yeah. Getting in now for sure. Change his mind. Okay, so we're going in for six. I guess so... we have leak up fiddle and stuff. So that's, yeah. that's good. We have to use the flooded strand then. And you know, it's actually really, really awesome that he didn't use that flooded strand. It's paying off huge here, right? Like being at seven is, is a massive deal. So yeah, it's it's like, a lot more than it's a whole spell more than six. Okay, here we go, skull crack, spell snare. Definitely snaring this every time. And then we have and, four stuff he tries to kill yeah, us. Yeah, jeez. Charm plus bolt. So if Drew fires off a bolt here, we go to three. And then we aren't in the best spot. But we have this force negation, so we won't just die. Uh, and if he does it later, then we have... Yeah. Okay, didn't fire off a Boros drone there. So that's a huge deal. Skewer face. All right, definitely forcing. 100%. Um, okay. See what Drew's got up his sleeve. Those uh, wasteland effects kind of potentially could matter because this mana leak would be. I mean, since uh, Drew needs to resolve multiple spells, this mana leak is going to be in the way. And then, well, another Snapcaster Mage is now. I don't think we'll send the land. Yeah, now I think we'd pass, uh, and then we can. We'll probably snap opt end of turn and then shove for eight with leak up. Yeah. But the leak isn't that relevant because it has five lands. But, you know, skewer face. Okay, well, we're definitely leaking this, right? Yeah. Okay, one card in hand. Yeah, there's no reason not to just run out everything here. Snap opt, and then... I mean, even if you have to tap out, any a removal spell would have to go towards the Snapcaster Mage, which right, you're exactly. happy and about. Like you were saying before, that's a good thing. The game, the game is over if we use this card. I think the game is actually just over, because yeah. if the card keeps him alive, then he's hellbent, and he can't draw seven damage. That's just not yeah. possible. Um, Searing Flush! That would do it. Although what, what, is, what, what does Searing Flush do? It's, it's seven damage, but it costs oh. seven. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that was a card. That's hilarious. It's been a long time. You know, oh. that's a good mental magic card. There was a, there was a Southern California player a long time ago named uh, Peter Zagetti who became infamous for playing that card. Uh, I believe in a Grand Prix a long time ago. I remember there was a time period when you know sometimes stories percolate through your local community, and that was one uh, in mine a long time ago. A long time ago. But anyway, that concludes the top four. So we have the blue white control facing. Show us. Show us the updated bracket. Is it uh, Green Tron versus Dredge on the other side of the top yeah, four? I, cool. I, I think we thought it would be Tron. Uh, and it was Tron. Okay. 
Triumph so, victorious. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Josh Feliciano, number four seed, is going to have a choice of priority against Sean Ryder. Blue White Control versus Mono Green Tron.